Hello and welcome inside the Mind of Matt. And this is part two of my Drone Race Director's Tools. In the last episode, I covered the video in. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the video, but in a slightly different way. We're going to actually be looking at the RF signal. And we're going to be using something called a Spectrum Analyzer or an RF Explorer. You mean something like this? No, something like this. Whoa! If you want to see what I got in the box and how to hook it up and how to use it for FPV, stay tuned. So what this is, is an RF Explorer, a spectrum analyzer. It has a range up to 6G comes in this nice fancy case comes with a couple antennas a cable is going to be needed to hook it up to the computer and some software is going to be needed to hook it up as well as some radio standards and some limit lines that I have provided in a link below you can download it and install it we're going to step over to the computer and I'm going to show you how so what is this tool going to help you do well this is going to allow you to check everybody that's racing's VTX signal, whether they're lined up on the right channel, whether they're overpowered, whether they're underpowered. Now, if they're overpowered, they're going to stomp on other pilots, and then you can just make sure that they adjust to the proper 25 milliwatt racing standard. And if they're underpowered, then the timer might have a problem picking up the signal, so they can either try to fix it or just be warned that the system might not pick up the signal. And it might take a little extra effort on behalf of the race director in order for that to happen, which we'll cover that when we cover the timing system in a later video. There's also a 3D printed base for it on Thingiverse for sitting on the command center. Now my main computer that I use for in the command center is already got it installed so I'm going to take you in on my desktop and we're going to install it on that. And hopefully I'll get the entire installation process right. But if there are any questions make sure you leave a comment down below. Also I'm not claiming to be an expert on this piece of equipment. I would like to thank Ted Wayne from Whiptopia. He was the one that actually turned me on to this equipment. If you've been to Whiptopia, there is a check tech before every qualifying round, and this is the tool that they use. So step over to the computer and go from there. Oh, and another thing, this thing does have a little bit of a hefty price tag on it, but it is definitely a tool worth investing in. So, back to the video. All right, now that we're here at the computer, let's go over, we're going to look up RF Explorer software. It's gonna take you to this official website, j3.rf-explorer.com downloads. I'm using Windows, so I'm gonna download the Windows version and we want, should be this guy. I'm just gonna save that in my downloads file. And we'll extract it. And install it. English. Except. All right, 
right, remember this path because we're going to need to get into there in a minute. Call. Create a shortcut. Okay, next you're going to have to go to the link that I provided. Okay, down in the description there is a link to the files. It is a zip file, our explorers. I've already got these files. They're in this RF Explorer. So what I need to do is I need to get into the RF Explorer files. I have there we go, programs. There it is. RF Explorer. And then I'm going to take these files here, including the folder, and copy them right into there. Continue. Do this for all. Okay. All right, now that that is installed, before we want to open it, we want to plug in the RF Explorer. You're going to need, like I said, previous a cable. Can't remember if this came with it or not, but it is a mini USB to USB A. You want to attach the antenna, by the way. There's three of them that come in the package. I'm using the one that's got the little extension. Looks just like that. I'm going to plug it in. And then open up RF Explorer for Windows. Now it is going to take a little bit of setting up here. Some of these numbers you're going to want to enter. Once you enter them once, uh, we're going to save uh, a profile and then you can just load that each time. So for starters, I just want to get up my reference. We want our bottom to be minus 101. And then our top, we're going to make minus 49. The span, we want to be 342. And then send. All right. Next, we're going to have to set up the channels. We need to go to radio standards, configure radio standards, and this is where we've got to import all those channels that from the zip file that you downloaded from my website. So each one of these you're going to have to do individually. So again, click on it, open, import, Okay, now I don't remember doing that previously, but that's basically what you want to do. So now we want to start to set these guys up. First thing you're going to want is to change all the colors. I like the yellow. You can leave it blue if you want, and you want a bell shape. You're going to have to do this for each channel. Okay, now that that's done, now you need to pick the channels that you're using for your profile. Me, I use R1, R2, R6, and F4. And I'm going to close. And 
There are the four channels that I'm going to be checked, tech, checking for a race that I run. Now, the last part. So, before we go to that last part, we need to save this. We're going to call this, uh, I just call FPV, and I'm going to save. Every time you start RF Explorer, you're going to have to go up here. Select, load, and then finally we have to add our limit line. So if we go to limit lines, read from file, and max, and here's the other files that you downloaded that were in the zip file that I provided. Just choose the one that matches with your profile. Here's mine, R1, R2, F4, R6. And now that is the high limit. And you will see here in a minute, we'll plug in some VTXs and see what the signal looks like and what you'll be checking for when it comes time for a race. All right, now I'm back over here at my command center. I got a, a tiny whoop that I'm gonna use. Tech check would just be plugging in and the guy's gonna look at your signal. So if you see, I have the yellow is just about where the magenta line is. It's still in the boot up mode. So that's what a good signal would look like. Now this is what 100 milliwatts would look like. If you see my yellow line is definitely shooting way above that would be an indicator to the race director that hey you need to check your your VTX power output and this is what 400 milliwatts look like and as you see it's really starting to to jump up really high if I was to auto scale it you'd see it's really up there pretty high now if they were either on the wrong channel or had the wrong VTX tables, this is what it would look like. Not centered on that channel, on this little peak area. So this just happens to be on the wrong channel, just for demonstration purposes. And this is gonna be what it looks like is if they have a poor signal, or a possibly a bad VTX, or bad antenna. I just happen to be in pit mode. And this is what HD0 signal looks like. Definitely a different signal, but our thresholds are still within. And for a bonus, I got a, a DJI here. We'll plug this. This guy is running at 50 megabytes and 1200 milliwatts. And as you can see, that signal is gigantic that's what she said <laughs> so i hope those examples help when you're setting up your rf explorer what to look for and what you might see so if you've gotten this far in the video i super appreciate it i hope that you've gotten something from this if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comment sections and i will try to answer anything. If you have any suggestions as to something that might help others or something that I might be doing wrong, please leave that in the comments section as well. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Hit the notification so that you know when part three is coming out. And don't forget to hit that like button on your way out if you don't mind. Here's a couple other videos that you might like. And keep on coming back because there's going to be more inside the mind of Matt. Peace out.